Welcome to the Rut Pop Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Zach Rutledge, along with Brandon Rutledge. Baron, Bra- 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 Brandon Rutledge, <laughs> the other Rutledge boy. That's all, folks. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. How are you? I'm doing great. This is my first day back to work in a, in a long time. <laughs> it, that's got to be little, that's got to yeah. be a little exciting though, right? Kind of get it feels like maybe yeah. a little bit back to normal. A little right? bit, a little bit. But one takeaway from the day: um, I need to watch what I eat for lunch. Oh yeah, why lunch? Uh, well, so I had this uh, meatball piata, which was amazing. It was delicious, but the rest of the day I was burping meatballs. Um, so I had like the, the, my mask smelled like bologna all afternoon. And so does your butt because you just ripped a nasty <laughs> ass toot right here in an enclosed room. <laughs> bologna. That was bologna. Bologna. It was super bologna. You smelled like bologna. You smelled like bologna. Ridiculous. I'm trying. I was pulling up my notes that I always have while we stream. Um, and yes. Notes. We got a strong stream. I pray to, I'm hoping to God we have a strong stream. Please, Lord, baby Jesus, let us have a good stream. Yeah. The podcast is going to be on point. I'm not worried about the podcast. What I'm worried about is our internet dropping out constantly. Right. It's, yeah. It's, you said it's like a roller coaster today, right? It's it's just I, watching watching the 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 service. I'm just like seeing it kind of do this on the on the graphs. Nice. On the not a flow chart, but a graph chart. Just watching it do this the entire time, like it's surfing around. You're not watching the stream on a flow. <sighs> so I'm not watching the stream on a flow. No. Why not? No. No stream on the flow. <laughs> I. Uh, um, it's been it's been an up and down you know it's been an up and down deal with with xfinity and um you know they really when it's working they really do have one of the best and most consistent services when it comes to internet but for whatever Hmm. reason for the last i think i figured it up when this started it was like 28 days ago and it's been terrible 28 days later 28 days later we're still having problems nice supposedly the reason we were seeing it do this today was because they were out in the area actually fixing whatever problem has been around. And for as much Xfinity bashing as I've been doing, they finally, after every single night being on the phone with them for two or three hours on hold, going in and out of their automated system, uh, which is a horrible, by the way. I'm not giving them a pass on the automated system. Their automated system is absolutely horrific. And... and they're using the pandemic as an excuse not to have a live person on the line anymore. And I'm like, look, you can do that. Like you can do that jobs from home. Like there's no reason. The only thing I think of maybe they lost revenue because people were losing their jobs. I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, but, and, and maybe they had the, to like furlough the Trump evictions are coming. Up soon. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Who knows? Um, and maybe they had to lay off people because of that. Like, I, you know what I'm just, I'm just not sure why I'm not sure why there should have been a, an issue with having like, you know what I mean? They're 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 customer service agents. They do like, and the people I'm talking to are doing it from home. Um, it's gotten so bad with Xfinity. Uh, I was on I was on with a service tech or a or a, um, a technical support agent on Sunday afternoon. It was like five o'clock here, and this dude says, "I'm going to run a test, uh, a, a modem test." And the entire time I'm listening to him, he sounds like he's on living on a farm. Like I can hear roosters crowing in the background the entire time right i was like this is weird and so he's running a test stops talking to me and so i just kind of start talking to rachel and i'm making myself dinner or whatever and all of a sudden like 10 minutes later i realize he's not come back to the line so i'm like looking at my phone i'm like no it's still going i can still hear the roosters crowing in the background so i haven't been cut off i'm like what the hell's (laughs) happening and then all of a sudden i start hearing Oh my god! He completely freaking <laughs> fell asleep. What, you think he was at home? I, yeah, I mean, he was probably <laughs> laying in bed. I'm just, I'm, I'm picturing this guy That's laying awesome. in bed, like with his like window open, like out on his farm, you know, oh, while there's yeah. cows in the background. That is and stuff. awesome. You know, breeze, like a nice warm breeze blowing in, right, <laughs> and just. <laughs> Just snore it, right? Logs, sawn logs. I did everything I could to wake him up. I was yelling. I was hitting like the buttons on the phone, like beep, wow. beep, beep, you know, whatever, trying to wake him up. Never happened. Okay. <laughs> Never woke up. So I finally, I, in the meantime, I'm telling Rachel all this. Like I'm explaining all this to Rachel. And so I said, I, I kind of thought, okay, this is what I'm going to try. I got 
because I wanted somebody else from Xfinity to see this happen or hear this happen. <laughs> right. Right. So I, I wonder if this call is being recorded for quality. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Please, God, tell me it was. <laughs> that would go in the training manual. Don't ever fall asleep. <laughs> Rule number one. You see, Jimmy, he's a bunglehead. You know, like he fell asleep on the job. You don't want to be a Mr. Bunglehead. You don't want to be a Mr. Bungle. <laughs> God, you remember that, don't you? Yeah, oh, oh yeah. yeah, the Mr. Bungle. Oh my yeah, God, Mr. Bungle. Um, so anyway, so I put the I put the thing on hold, and um, I uh, or I, I I mean I just kind of went to the next uh, or next line or whatever, and I called Xfinity back and went through the and as soon as it rang, I merged the call, so I could still hear the roosters crowing, so I knew the guy was still there. And um, you'd think the roosters would wake him up. Right. Right. I'm telling you, it was just like a peaceful, (laughs) serene experience for him or something. What? I don't know. Huh. I'm not sure. And so anyway, um, they I went I was going through all the prompts and I got like right to the last one where they put you on hold to get you somebody. And I hear him go, oh, shit. And he (laughs) he hung up. Are you serious? Yeah. And he killed oh, the line. Man, that's insane. Yeah. I wonder if he was the other person getting the other call. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wonder. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> um, anyway, so then I explained to that person what what had happened. And they they said, Oh, we're gonna take care of you. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Um, we'll get back to you. Fine. And then Monday, that was Sunday, and then Monday rolls around. Um, and we had some pretty bad storms come through Monday night. Do you remember? I don't know if you were around, but um, yeah, you know, like so, eighty mile an hour winds yeah. or something. And crazy. so I was thinking that um, we were. <laughs> I was thinking that it was like not only we're going to lose our internet tonight, but we're going to lose our power and everything else, and possibly our house, depending on how tornadic this gets. Well, the damn we'd probably thing, be okay down here in the basement. Well, at, down here is be fine. <laughs> Um, but your, your, the rest of your house is gone. Right. Yeah. It was, We're fine. Well, I, I was saying. We're still streaming. Right. Exactly. That was the thing. It was like, I was, I was like, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to, I'm going to stream. If, if I'm going out, I'm going out streaming, baby. So I started, I dropped in, dropped into a stream, started playing some games or whatever. And it, um, it, it, it was fine. It literally lasted the entire night. I thought we were going to end up being like the scene from Twister where all of a sudden, you know, like young Ellen Hunt, you know, uh, uh, or Helen Hunt comes out of the basement and the whole house is gone kind of thing after her father was blown away. Yeah. Um, but it was, everything was fine. Um, and, and the internet lasted the entire time, never had any issues and the, and the power never had any issues. And then, so we went into the next night and the next night, totally fine. Not a single, uh, internet issue. I think the second night. And then Wednesday, I sit down to do it. I'm like, this is great. This is awesome. I'm going I'm to stream in the afternoon so I don't stay up until 5 o'clock in the morning, right? And as soon as I start going, internet bottomed out and dropped out on me again. Nice. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Couldn't believe it. It didn't come back until 11 p.m. <laughs> so anyway, so today, supposedly, these, there have been guys in the area and... Um, you know, this all leads me back to I got to give Xfinity credit. They've they've kept their patience with me for the most part. Um, I've tried to keep my patience with everything. And I finally got a hold of somebody from billing and and their billing department gave me a full credit for the month. Because at first they were only like, well, we'll give you 20 bucks. We'll give you 30 bucks. And I'm like, dude, do you realize like my job revolves around uploading things? Right. Like I need to be able to upload information, upload data and getting one megabit per second when I sh- when I'm paying for 35 is ridiculous. That's a huge discrepancy. Right. So, I think again, I think we're getting there. It's just how consistent and how much can you trust it? That's a good that, question. That's that's where we're at right Xfinity? now. Xfinity? <laughs> can you answer that question? Xfinity? <laughs> I'm talking to you. Xfinity. <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. Anyway, right. here's the best part, though, is that the download's been fine. And so we have still, as a household, have been able to stream our TV, stream our movies. You know Which what I mean? Which probably mostly what most consumers are using are it using for. it for. And that's what everybody's worried about. And that's what they kept, when I was on the phone with Xfinity, that's what they kept talking about. Well, your your usage looks great. Like, well, if you're just only looking at total usage, sure, because all you're seeing is total usage, which the primary... Uh, usage is download the downstream right 
the upload is the problem. And, and the thing is, is even on usage on an upload, if I upload one gigabit, it's still going to be one gigabit, right? No matter if it takes me 50 seconds or 50 hours, it's still one gigabit. That's the problem. So from a usage standpoint, it looks normal. Right. Not the speed of how long that one gigabit took to travel. And that was that was what we were running into. That was our biggest issue. Interesting. But what do you do? I mean, I, at this point, honestly, we are we are literally handcuffed in this area. Xfinity is all we got. So if we don't have Xfinity, we don't have internet. Nice. That's that's the that's the just the realistic nature of what we're dealing with out here, which really sucks. Again, luckily we've got something good instead of like AT. I take that back. AT and T's out here. Their internet's not. I mean, their internet's like twenty five up, twenty five down, or something like that. Which would be fine. Honestly, the upload would be fine. The download would not nearly handle what we need to do. Right. So it would be, it would be pointless. It would be pointless. Uh, but anyway, so speaking of you know, speaking of being able to download and 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 stream and everything. So um, I know we need to talk about Umbrella Academy. You finally finished Umbrella Academy. Yeah, I finished Netflix. it last night. But have you? I sent you. I sent you a text about this. And I don't know, I don't think you actually gave me a response, but did you, did you see my text about that new Transformers series on Netflix? Yeah, yeah and I actually watched the first episode of it last night. Well, I, I, I don't know if I finished the whole episode, but I, I watched most of that episode. It's not good, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not good, um, but it it's, it's on par with what the original TV series was like. Right. Like as far as performances and story and just weird convoluted mess and everything really outside of just random um, Transformers all of a sudden changing color from scene to scene like they used to do in the old cartoon. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. That's so kind of was, what I felt like, too. And and I like what they're doing is that it's not necessarily a reboot. It's almost like here's the story before the cartoon. Yeah. That's kind of cool. And they look the same as they did in those old cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I, that, Bumblebee has a little yeah. spikes on his head. And, I, and again, I think Wh- that's... Wheeljack has like the lights on the side of his head. Right. And I think that's what I'm saying. Like, I think that's what's digging. That's what's making me dig it is that it's nostalgia. Like, it's yeah. that nostalgic feeling about that. You know, even though it's a complete, you know, it's, it's computer generated, you know. Well, I noticed it's, it's rated like Y7, <laughs> like Youth 7. Yeah. But it's on the adult section of Netflix. Like. I don't think it's on the kids section of Netflix. Yeah, I mean, they haven't they haven't done any right. They haven't done any cursing or anything like that. Yeah, but it's pretty dark. Like yeah, uh, Me- Megatron's kind of scary, you know. Megatron's a little scary. I tell you again. Here's the thing: it's not good, but it it's interesting to watch the character development. And I can't even imagine I'm talking about this in a Transformers property in the same sentence but the character development of megatron in this thing where he starts off as just this general that really feels like he's even though he's performing evil is doing the best for the planet for cybertron but then um he still has honor right and he still doesn't want to be evil and manipulative like Starscream, right? Starscream is like his alt, you know, um, yin to his yang, almost, right? Just from how they handle things. Mm-hmm. But they, they, he finally gets pushed to the breaking point of no, I'm finally like, there's, there's, there's a, there's a through line there in the story where he killed um, the the original like Autobot leader or something. Yeah, like that. and like Optimus and him were like. The, the, the two underneath that general, like right. there was a general above them, and they were the ones underneath. Exactly, and they were like comrades, exactly. or friends, or something. Exactly, and and he uh, and and Megatron obviously killed that guy. It didn't come across as he killed him for power. It's it came across as he killed him because he felt like he needed to, because this general was not leading them down the right path. Right, he didn't right. believe in what this general was doing, and he needed to take over. And so, yeah, he committed again, you know, a, a horrible act. But in his mind, it wasn't. It wasn't evil. It was strategic kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, as the as this season progressed, he became the Megatron we know in the original cartoon, the evil guy. Hmm. I just I thought that was cool. I thought that was a little interesting path that they took with him because we hadn't seen that yet with a with a Megatron character. Thought that was neat. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of cool. Um, but there, I guess there's three seasons planned. Okay. I think they're going to do three. So this is the first one, and then they've got you know more to lead. Cool. As long as they've got enough, I guess, you know, feedback or, or uh, popularity feedback to continue. Hmm. I don't know. 
Did you see that Kevin Smith's doing the He-Man cartoon? I've heard that for a while. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Um, I haven't, I, I, I heard about it when they first announced it and then I didn't, I kind of like lost touch of what I, I, he's got a, um, he's got a podcast too. Uh, and I don't listen to it. Do you listen to his podcast? Uh, no, I, I, I know that like some of those Canadian movies that he did were based on his podcast stories. Oh really? Yeah. Like Tusk and oh, Yoga, Yoga Hosers. Okay. Yeah, th- those were, uh, those were stories from the podcast that, did he, not know that, that. he turned into screenplays. And, I and did not know that. Yeah. I think it's called Smodcast. Yeah. The Smodcast. Yeah. And then he's doing a, um, and, and the main characters in Tusk are, are podcasters. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Haley Joel Osment and uh, Justin Long play podcasters. Nice. And and that's what Justin Long's doing. He he's, he goes out for his podcast to meet like cra- like weird, crazy people. Okay. Um, and the, the guy that ends up, you know, turning him into a walrus um, is like the crazy guy he goes to see for the podcast episode. Okay. So I've stayed away from that. I do not like gross out movies okay never i've never been a fan of them like some of the eli roth movies and sure i just can't i can't they're not i don't consider those horror movies they're just gore movies yeah it's weird i can't i can't get into them so um like human centipede no Uh, no no thanks i I have no desire to see that no desire to see that whatsoever and some people just love that stuff and i I cannot i I don't understand those people yeah you never go butt to mouth no you never go butt to mouth no you just don't don't do it you don't do it um so the with Tusk, I I was curious, what's the gore factor on that? Like, is it is it's, it nasty? Uh, like, what, uh, what's going on with that? I I would say there are points where it turns my stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because unfortunately, it's going to keep me from watching it, and it okay. has at this point. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. And and I hate that because I I like to absorb every Kevin Smith property. Sure. But but Yoga Hosers is fine, right? Uh, I mean, it. No, here's the thing: there there is so, a level of Kevin Smith funk you know in all of his movies yeah um, yoga hosers is a comedy okay i mean it, it, it has horror elements to it um and it and it does i would have some like what i would consider body horror moments mm-hmm. um but i it, it's a comedy it's funny okay um whereas tusk is serious <laughs> scary horror mm-hmm. um but i didn't the, know the, tusk the, was the performances serious. are amazing. Like Haley Joel Osment is a wonderful character actor. Okay, um, he, he he's in Tusk too. He's in both of them, um, and just does a great job in both. Um, Justin Long, he's in both of them also. Okay. Um, I mean, he plays the terror very realistically. I mean, he he does a pretty good job acting hmm. in that one. Um, and and he's hilarious in Yoga Hosers. He plays a, a yoga instructor. <laughs> he, like he plays the girls' yoga instructor, y- Yogi Bear. Haley Joel Osment does. No, no, Justin Long. J- Justin Long plays, okay. y- plays Yogi Bear. Oh, I could totally see Justin Long as a yoga instructor. Yeah, he's Yogi Bear. Yogi Bear. <laughs> what was the um, um, What was the movie he was in where you Brand- him and Brandon Routh were partners? Oh, I think that's another Kevin Smith, isn't it? Zack and Mary make a porn. That's what it is. Thank you. Yeah, that's another Thank you. Kevin Smith movie. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Movie. I love that movie. Um, it's a weird one. Okay. So, but, okay. So, but, but Johnny Depp's performance is the one that stands out the most in both movies. Okay. Fantastic performance by Johnny Depp. All right. Like, fair. Uh, unrecognizable. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. So, okay. But, I mean, is Tusk, like, can I get through Tusk? Yeah. Okay. It, it, and it's worth it. Okay. It's worth it. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I will do it. I will do it. <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> I just can't, I can't, I just have a hard time with those movies. But like I said, I know there's been some queasy moments in the other Kevin Smith films. Yeah. Like it's just part of the. Yeah. And, and what am I saying? Michael Park, his performance is amazing as well. Is that and, like one of his, in Tusk? In Tusk, yeah. He plays the crazy guy that turns him into a walrus. Was that like one of his last performances? It, it is one of his last performances. Oh, they, wow. they wanted him to be in Yoga Hosers also. Okay. But he was too ill. Gotcha. To, um, to be in that one. Um, God, his, that his performance in, in Tusk is frightening his his role in kill bill volume two i liked him in volume one where he different guy yeah he plays a different character but in both uh, movies. but it's esteban Vie- uh, viejo yeah v- viejo is that how you say it esteban esteban esteban, <laughs> esteban. yeah i <laughs> his um I can't even. I'm not going to say it on here. But yeah, the, it, it died. It died. <laughs> <laughs> it died. <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> that oh god, it's so good. Um, the thing that Trump grabbed died. Yeah, 
<laughs> there you go. Um, he, yeah, he was. He was. God, he was so good. He was so good in that in that role. It was such a smart or small part in uh, in Kill Bill Volume Two, but it's so memorable. Yeah. And all he does is just sit and have a conversation. It's the entire part. Love it. Yep. Yeah, he's he's great. Anyway, okay, so let's get into... Actually, before we get into Umbrella Academy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep pushing Umbrella Academy. We've got news. We've got movie news. We've we got do. we've got m- movie situation news, whatever. Um, and I filled you in on this a little bit. But you may have already heard about it. Okay, so AMC, officially, AMC Theaters, opening... With new release movies, August twenty first. Okay, oh, a week from now. A week from now, August twentieth, they will be having nineteen twenties day, where ticket prices are what they were back in the nineteen twenties. Be there for fifteen cents, sir. You can see Back to the Future, Goonies, or Ghostbusters. Will you go and yeah. be in the theater for fifteen cents on August? 20th. I think I'd rather just give him a dollar and say, keep the change. <laughs> I don't really want 85 cents rolling around my pocket the whole but movie. But I got to do is, hey, here's here's the deal. Here's the deal. <laughs> Coin shortage, baby. At, they're just trying to help. All they want you to do is bring in a dime and a nickel and gotcha. say, here you go. Gotcha. Okay. 15 cents. Help the coin shortage. Okay. Scratch that uh, that movie theater itch everybody's been feeling. But I've been, I I put a poll out on Twitter because I was curious. Yeah. Like, what would you, you know, would you actually, not only would you participate in the 15 cent kind of promotional thing that they're doing mm-hmm. to just basically entice people back. Like, the idea is to give people an opportunity to come in. This is my interpretation. I don't know the CEO of AMC. He doesn't talk to me. Um, if he did, I have ideas and we can help each other. I promise you. Um, but <laughs> uh, I think the idea here is, is to make... Uh, give people an opportunity to see how it will work, right? Mm -hmm. How you're going to mask up, how the concessions are going to work, what the seating arrangements are going to be, the social distancing inside the movie theater. I think it's basically a cheap way, a very cheap way to get people through the door and say, here, take a look and see this is how how it will be. What do you think, right? Knowing that the very next day they're going to have, you know, uh, a new release in Russell Crowe's new movie, Unhinged. Which I'm very curious about, actually. He's a bad guy. It, it's very reminiscent of Duel. Like that's what it feels like, except you're you see the truck driver this time instead yeah. of not instead of it just being the truck is the evil the bad guy, right? The monster. Um, he is the monster, right? Hmm. So, um, and then the following week is uh, New Mutants. It actually, got a damn release date. Can't believe it. That movie should not even exist. I'm so right. excited. I'm so freaking excited about New Mutants at this point. Yeah. Because of all of the turmoil around that movie. It'll be different. It'll be weird. So anyway, so now I'm curious, you know, would you go on, on uh, you know, August uh, 20th and go to the theater for the 15 cents just to see, a cheap way to see? Um, or would you wait for a new release? Or would you go at all? That's a great question. I, I, I don't know. Um you know, I, it, if, if I was, I, I would definitely be leery of how many people are there. I, I'd probably, like, scope it out first. I'd probably, like, see if there's a lot of cars in the parking lot, you know, get, it, get a feel for how many people are actually in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, you know, I'd probably check the news, like, see what the, you know, coronavirus levels are in, in that zip code. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about your own hometown here, let's say, in you know, Indianapolis. We yeah. kind of know where Indianapolis is at this point. You know, are you are you going? Are you buying a fifteen cent ticket on August twentieth to go see Ghostbusters, Goonies, or uh, Back to the Future? One week from now, mm-hmm. um, I would say no. Okay, this is, I mean judgment free zone. I'm just yeah. curious. I'm yeah. really curious no, more I, than anything. I, I would say no. Okay, uh, new release movie, Bill and Ted. What what do they call Bill and Ted three? Uh, face, face the, the music. music yeah bill and ted three face the music what is it like september 3rd or something like that yeah i think so early september yeah end of august something like that august 28th you buying a ticket for that if if let's say let's say september 3rd was this I friday re- i really want to i really want to say yes but realistically it's probably no it's probably no yeah wow okay yeah okay Un- unfortunately I, I, w- I would love to see that on the big screen i would have loved i watched greyhound the other day i would have loved to have seen that on the big screen what would you think of Greyhound? I, I enjoyed it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I know you said you, you felt like not much happened. Yeah. 
But, you know, I, I don't know if it's because I served in the Air Force for 12 years and I'm able to, like, put myself in, like, you know, a, a sailor's point of view and, okay. you know, kind of feel it from their point of view. But I, I would have been scared to death if I was, you know, a sailor on that ship. Mm. I, I, you know, oh, yeah. Don't I, get me wrong. I mean, I, I, th- those guys must have been, you know, so courageous to you know, work, work in the bowels of those ships and, you know, keep, keep that thing running and put, mm-hmm. put out hot meals, you know, through all that, you know, turbulent water. Mm-hmm. Um, it, they just had to have been scared to death. Right. The entire time. Like, I, I know I would have been. Sure. And um, so I, I, I think about it from that perspective. Okay. Plus, you know, plus I also think about, you know, Tom Hanks' other involvement with World War II movies, you know, and, and he really has a lot invested in that era. Um, you know, with executive producing Band of Brothers and the Pacific and, and various other docu- oh, he's co- documentaries that surrounded that, as well as Saving Private Ryan. Um, I, I just think he's well versed in that era. Mm-hmm. And his and he his his uh, company Playtone did produce this one too. So he's he's definitely invested in that. Yeah, part yeah. of I, I just really like how cinema. he how he kind of told a more personal story as opposed to, you know, these, you know, big, huge epic battle scenes with, right. with a bunch of explosions and all that stuff. Right. I really appreciated, you know, a more character driven. Um, but see, outside of him, there were no characters. But you're, you're right. But the way he wrote his character, you know, and, and the way he wrote, you know, the movement of the ship and, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I really, I, I really felt like he wrote it in a visual way. Um, and, and I I enjoyed that. It, it's an hour and a half long. That movie it's, should have it's been very visual. That movie should have been two hours. And I think you give me an extra half hour, getting to know like the cook as an example that sure. they made a big deal about him dying and all this stuff. Right. Like his character was not in this movie long enough to care. You know what I mean? Like yeah, again, I get, I get that. I get it from a perspective. From a, but yeah, and you're right. From a cinematic point of view, there, there you know there wasn't very much character development outside of Tom Hanks. Uh, yeah, outside of Tom Hanks, and you know, and it, it wasn't very story driven. It was more character driven, mm-hmm. um, more action, you know, driven. You know, it it, it just made, it made me feel for those guys. Is is oh, is, don't is, what, is what you know the movie made me. Yeah, think of. I just I wish I I, I wish I would have felt I wish I would have felt by the end of that movie. When all of those other ships are applauding it, because it really got no, like it basically that the you know the Greyhound was just like okay, thanks, bye, you know, like that's basically how they left it. Yeah, and so you hated that, like you really hated that, and so they they tried to build this moment of they were appreciated by all of these other, um, I'm not going to say the word, all the other people. <laughs> so I'm not going to. No, I'm going to say it. All the other seamen uh, up there. Yeah, and, I, was, yeah, I was trying to use sailors <laughs> as opposed to seamen. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone it's gone that way baby yep it is it is that it, we've gone that direction <laughs> um anyway uh you know i i wanted to feel more in that moment and i didn't and it sucked and i and and part of it i think i don't remember if that was the third movie i watched or the second movie because i watched extraction first and then maybe Greyhound. Oh, so you were probably like amped up. Yeah. Um, and it okay. really brought me, you know what I mean? I okay. literally watched them back to back. Yeah, that makes sense. And so maybe that was it. Yeah. I'll give it another shot at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. Because uh, again, Tom Hanks is solid. He's solid in everything. Like, right. He's just solid. And to me, the thing with him was, is like, I didn't feel like there was any character development with him because he was, he yeah. literally start. he ended the exact same way he started. Uh, unsure of himself. But a badass, like, and like, he's a badass, but he doesn't know he is or, or won't accept the fact that he is. Yeah. Like he was making, you know, you know, you know, clutch decisions, um, at a moment's notice, but in his own mind, questioning everything he decided. And that, that's the way a lot of veterans are. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. And, you know, a lot of them feel like their stories aren't important enough to be told. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that that Hanks is still telling stories like that. I'm really glad he is. Sure. Um, and I don't know if I've if I've told you this before, but um, there was a movie from 1952 called Flat Top, and it, it's it, it's kind of a similar movie. It, it's about a flat top air, aircraft carrier during the Korean War. Okay. Um, and it was made back in 1952. It was made in 1952, and it used actual footage from the USS Princeton. Um, I don't know that ship. 
the USS Princeton is the ship that my grandfather, Ray Robertson, was stationed on. No kidding. D- during the Korean War. Oh, wow. And they were actually filming this movie while he was on that ship. No kidding. Yeah. That's cool. And I, I didn't know this until after he had passed away. Okay. And I, I don't even know if, if he knew that this movie existed. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a movie called Flat Top. It, star, it stars Sterling Hayden. Um, I actually watched it on YouTube one day hmm. um, after I found out that it was shot on the US, USS Princeton. And it, it, the movie's about the USS Princeton <laughs> during the Korean War, and it uses actual footage from the USS Princeton. <laughs> and my grandfather, the, the planes are called Panthers. And I, and I found this out in the movie. He, my grandfather had a Panther tattoo on his arm. Right. Um, and and that's why he, because they flew these planes called Panthers. Get out of here! And it's cool because on the on the flat I never top, knew why he had that Panther tattoo on the flat top. The planes lift lifted their wings up uh-huh. when they were um, you know parked on deck. Okay. So when their wings are up, it kind of looks like a cat. <laughs> so I, I I think that's why how they got the nickname the Panther. Huh. But I I bet a ton of guys from that ship had had a Panther tattoo. No kidding. It's interesting. That is wild. But when I was you got one, uh, yeah, yeah. When I was stationed in, stationed in Japan, because my my grandfather, the, the USS Princeton, was um, stationed in Japan, um, and my grandfather got that tattoo in Japan. Mm-hmm. So when I was stationed in Japan, I also got a, a panther tattoo. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. S- sorry, I'm messing with something real quick. No, it's okay. Uh, I, I didn't want to interrupt totally your story. Okay. Um, but it's interesting because they, they use actual footage, but they also mix it with like studio shots. Um, and, and you can kind of tell which, which ones are actual footage and which ones are studio shots. So your dad was, or your 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 uh, pop was never in, uh, wasn't in any of the shots. I, I don't know. He might be. Oh, okay. He might be. I, I mean, a, a lot of a lot of those actual footage shots are long shots. Okay. So you you can't really see the sailors' faces. Okay. Um, because they're so far away. I mean, one of them could be him. I don't know. Gotcha. He could be in it. Gotcha. And he he may have never known that he was, <laughs> you know, uh, he may not he may not have even known this movie existed. Right. I I don't know. Huh. It's called Flat Top. Flat Top. Nineteen fifty two. Where can you get it? Like, where can you find it now? I, they they have it on DVD. Like, you can get, you can buy it off Amazon. I I, I need to. Hmm. Um. I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's a Blu-ray, uh, but I, I know there's DVDs out there of it. Flat Top. But I I, I just watched it on YouTube. You can watch the whole thing. No on kidding. You, yeah, you can watch. Oh, the, you okay. can watch the well, whole thing you on YouTube. Just, YouTube and just search Flat Top. Search Flat Top on YouTube. Do you have um, to search like Flat Top nineteen fifty two? That would probably help. Yeah. Okay. Um, or Flat Top USS Princeton. Gotcha. Um, l- learn about the USS Princeton from the uh, Korean War. Awesome. Um, I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, so stand by. I'm going to turn some music on real quick cool. and uh, make an adjustment, and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We're back. Well, thank you for hanging with us. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Um, I think we got it fixed. Uh, Couch gnome. I think we got it fixed. Couch gnome. Couch Couch gnome. gnome. Yeah, I um. The, I, I don't know if the network adapter um, it still doesn't look tremendously great coming out, but we'll see. I think I, we're getting the speeds we need, so we should be we should be better now. Cool, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, um, okay, so let's get into let's get into. Um, Umbrella Academy. Sure. Sure. Your, what was your initial gut reaction? Okay. I loved the first season. Uh, yeah, I, I did too. Love the first season. It's one of my favorite Netflix series, including this season. Same here. Uh, um, I Same here. had a lot of people, I read a lot of people talking about Umbrella Academy and saying that it was, this, this newest season was way better than the first season. Okay. I don't agree with that, but what do I know? What do you know? Uh, well, I I know my my initial gut reaction was I enjoyed it, right? Um, as far as t- time travel stories, I love time travel stories. Um, historical fiction, I love historical fiction. 
Um, I love time travel stories about Kennedy assassinations. However, I think Stephen King did it better <laughs> with his novel 112263. Um, I, I just, I, you know, the whole time I just felt like, ah, this is a derivative of Stephen King's 112263. Sure. Um, but I, but I, I love those characters. I love that universe. Um, you know, I love the concept. Um, but, you know, just initially, I, I have a problem with any time travel story to begin with because time travel is not possible. Time travel is messy. <laughs> T- tell, um, telling a time travel story is messy. I mean, that was a lot of people's biggest hang up with uh, in uh, in game was the time travel aspect of it and their explanation of the way time travel works. Yeah. Like that. I mean, I, I, I love time travel stories. Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies. Um, Donnie Darko is a time travel movie. I, I love, love that. I, I, I love time travel stories. The, the Stephen King 11, 22, 63. It's one of my favorite books. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> time travel is not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Especially going backward, I you know I I could I could see an argument for going forward in time, but going backward is not possible. So don't kill my dreams, damn it! Uh, first of all, the space time continuum <laughs> is based on space and time. So t- time that we know that we think of time is like a two D line, right? Like a two dimensional line, just you know that keeps going and going. And while that two dimensional line is going and going, oh, the, the yeah. universe, the universe is also expanding. Hey, so, thanks for the sub, Spikey. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So a- as the universe is expanding, time is also expanding. So you would literally need a machine that could control the size of the universe, the shrinking and expansion of the universe. You would need literally need to harness the power of God um, <laughs> to be able to time travel. What is the not, not to mention <laughs> not to mention the fact that the Earth is orbiting the sun at I, I, I can't remember the exact speed. I want to say it's like thirty nine thousand miles per hour. It's we're orbiting the sun. At the same time, the sun is orbiting the Milky Way galaxy at 79,000 miles per hour. And at the same time, the Milky Way galaxy is flying through the universe at like 1.4 million miles per hour. So you would literally need a machine that could also be like a GPS and know where your world position is. Or else you would be locked in the middle of space if you jumped in time because you would have no idea where the planet you just came from is is in that space in time um, as well as lo- as well as it's orbiting the sun and the sun orbiting the milky way galaxy so it is literally impossible <laughs> without the power of god but, but doc brown built a machine that did that tony stark <laughs> built tony stark <laughs> built a gps they put them all on their hands you can't shrink the universe oh god <laughs> You can't. Shrink it's science things. fiction. <laughs> and I, fiction. I, I, I love time travel stories. Fiction. I, I love them. But, okay, but that's that's my first problem with them. Number one, <laughs> as Pikey said, it's on an Apple Watch now. Come on, <laughs> what is G- time, time traveling? GPS. You can track it. So I, I, I mean, I, I understand there is certain types of time traveling. I, I know, like the the GPS satellites. There, there is a certain type of time traveling with that. Like there, are, there are a few seconds ahead of us. So like they are, tra- you know, literally. Um, you know, ahead of us in time, um, but just because of that three dimensional space. What is it? What? What? Like, isn't isn't Japan like some weird? Um, what's the world clock for Japan? I don't know. They're they're twelve hours ahead of us. It's only twelve. They're tw- they're they're like exactly twelve hours ahead of us. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. So like right now it's eight fourteen p.m. It's eight fourteen a.m. in Japan right now. Tom- tomorrow. It says it's nine fourteen. Does it? Okay, Th- they're thirteen hours ahead. Thirteen hours ahead. Okay, because I thought that was like the deal. Like you could almost spend like an entire day there and then land. I think when I was there, daylight saving time hadn't been gotcha done here in Indiana yet. So it, when I when I was there, daylight saving time didn't exist okay. in Indiana. So it was twelve hours back then. Gotcha. Um, but now we observe daylight saving time. Gotcha. Okay. And it's saving, not savings. Okay. For, so so take all the practical <laughs> pay, take all the practical <laughs> applications. You just you just killed this <laughs> discussion with your <laughs> time travel rant. Sorry, in practicality, that's my first problem with time travel stories. But it's fiction. I I know. I, I love them, but <laughs> but my mind that can't. But, but my yeah, I know. But my mind can't get past that time travel is not possible. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's my first. Your brain is conflicted stories. with itself. I love time travel stories, but I can't get past the fact that they can't. I, happen. I do. I, I mean, I Back to the Future has been my favorite movie since like 1985. <laughs> <laughs> exactly my point exactly i love them they're awesome they're interesting you know that the hell is wrong with you? i i don't know i i'm i'm a walking contradiction <laughs> what, what is, i don't what even is, know where to go like i don't even know like what does doc holiday say at the, at the end of tombstone <laughs> um i don't know all i know is i'm a, i'm your huckleberry i'm your that's all you know that's all i know <laughs> Uh, he, he says something about being a complete hypocrite. Oh, uh, because he's he's dying with that with his boots off. He wanted, oh, he wanted to die with his boots on. Yeah. Um. No, okay. I'm, I'm a hypocrite. Okay. So so so. <laughs> says I'll be damned. I'll be I'll be damned. <laughs> That's right. I remember that. Yeah. He's just staring down at his feet. Yeah. Um. So okay. Forget practical science aside. Sure. <laughs> Give me your damn. Give me a give me a review of Umbrella Academy season I, two. I liked it. it I don't. It's it you didn't still, knock your socks off. It's still one of my favorite, you know, Netflix series. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, the, the characters are, are hilarious. Some of them, some of them are, you know, deeply disturbed. Um, I love that they were able to bring back everybody. They were able to bring back, you know, Ellen Page's character and, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, I, I can't remember the actor who plays the the leader of the, the father i can't remember his name oh but, i don't know his name either um, Re- reggie reginald reginald I, I just can't think of any of those honestly uh, I, outside of ellen page don't know the other no i uh, the tom hooper i know tom hooper um has been in a lot of stuff um but yeah other than tom hooper and ellen page i'm not too savvy tom um, on the other on the other uh, actors in, in umbrella academy um, well, except for like Mary J. Blige um, in the first season, I thought she did a fantastic job, as well as her partner. Um, gosh, what's what's the? I can't remember his name either. He's on Mindhunter also. Um, have you seen Mindhunter? I flat out forgot that Mary J. Blige was even in the first season. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I, I was excited about. I was like, man, who are they going to get to play the? You know that that type of character in the second season but they were like mostly silent swedish guys we're, we're doing that right you know that i completely that, forgot that she was Blige. i completely um, forgot she was in that damn thing i i honestly forgot i love those two the the um what did the, they call the, the big guy i know you're talking about <laughs> big, i just can't think of the, dude. what did they call what did they call those two like the handler is like the the, the yeah the handler's in charge of right the, but what's um, the time travel hazel Hazel, yeah, Hazel is the big guy. Yeah, he's on Mindhunter. Okay, and he is a great actor. Yeah, he's enjoyable. Um, yeah, he I, he, I can't remember which serial killer he plays in Mindhunter, but he plays a very creepy serial killer. Gotcha. In, in the Netflix series Mindhunter. Cha cha, cha cha was her name. Cha cha and Hazel. Cha cha and Hazel. Yeah, oh, yeah, they were good. I yeah, I um, I, I kind of missed them in the second season. Honestly, yeah, I I did like the Swedish guys. Like they were kind of cracking me up, and then by the end of it, you know, when he gets on that damn bus. And drives away with, yeah, all, with of, all the hippies. Yeah, that was that was funny. Just the eye roll he gives before he like he's like, yes, this is my life now, you know. And that's the thing. There's so many great little moments like that. Like I love that they made they gave Ben something to do in this in this season. Like mm-hmm. they, he had a, a a purpose, right? Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was really cool that they that they gave him a purpose in this in this season. Um. I just, I don't know. Like, I just, again, it didn't sit as well. I, I found a harder time getting through this season Did you? than the first season. Well, I, I, I don't know if I, I, I had time constraints for various reasons, um, but I, I, I binge watched the first season. Like, mm-hmm. I couldn't stop watching it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't stop watching. I have to finish this. <laughs> right. And I, I don't feel like I had that with this one. I, kinda, I didn't. I kind of watched it in spurts. I, I watched like three episodes here three episodes there exactly and i felt the same way um, felt the exact same way and that was i think and 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 even the wife was having the same kind of problems you hmm. know when she would we weren't we just weren't into it much yeah and uh, and part of the reason we, we are splitting like we were splitting like three series at the time so we had umbrella academy going we had designated survivor going and we had west wing going let me tell you let me tell you a funny story about so obviously there is a similar connection between west wing and designated survivor both shows take place in the white house right Mm -hmm. so we're watching um we're watching uh uh west wing one night or something like that the next night we start watching designated survivor and uh 
something happens to Kiefer Sutherland's president character where he needs uh, therapy, right? So he needs to see a, a psychiatrist. And this actor shows up as a psychiatrist and or, or he's like talking to him in a room sitting like as he's a psychiatrist. And I'm I'm sitting here watching this guy going, why is he talking to him? He's a reporter. Because he, that same actor, was a reporter in oh, the other in, in the West other Wing. in the West Wing. <laughs> That's funny. And my brain and Rachel's brain did the same thing. Like all of a sudden, <laughs> we're just like the two shows just merged. That's awesome. Off this one character playing two <laughs> totally different roles, or actor playing two totally totally different roles. So it like completely freaked us out when That's funny when it happened. Yeah. Uh, so you had like a postmodern loop. <laughs> it was weird, right? Like it was, yeah. yeah. I it was odd. It was an odd feeling where all of a sudden, like. Neither one of us said anything to each other about it when it was happening, but I. But we were both ended up. We talked about it afterwards. We both ended up thinking, "I thought that guy was a reporter." Like the entire, <laughs> like in our own brains. But neither one of us wanted to admit that we like had mistaken him for somebody else the entire time or something. I'm not sure what happened there, but it's funny. Sure enough, he was. It's just the same actor. It was just funny they got the same actor to come back and and. Um, play. I can't think of the actor's name, but he's he was in Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner. He played hmm. um, his brother. Remember the guy that shakes the little girl that makes her like choke on the hot dog at the end of the movie? Yeah, um, I think he was in maybe maybe he was in the Big Chill. <laughs> he's he's in um, Revenge of the Nerds. Yes, <laughs> he's one of the nerds. He's one of the nerds. Nerd. <laughs> yes, he's like the redheaded nerd with the big thick yep. glasses. That guy. Yeah. I just don't know his name. Uh, I I used to. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, it might come to me later. I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I know exactly who you're talking about. He kind of looks like Richard Dreyfus. Right, exactly. And, you, uh, you could easily mistake him. Like, I know exactly it must have been awful about. for him in Hollywood in the 80s. Like, hey, are, are, you're, you're are that you guy. Pinky Dreyfus? You're like, that guy. Weren't you in Jaws? <laughs> it's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now, d- speaking of son of a bitch, um, that designated survivor, I can now see why that movie or that show only lasted two seasons on ABC. Really? And only one season on Netflix. I haven't like gotten 24 th- in the White House. It's literally 24 in the White House. I it makes sense. Like it, it 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 was doing its best early on in the first season to really separate itself from that idea. But finally about halfway through the first season, I think the writers just said <laughs> F it, you know, yeah. Yeah. and we're just going to go full 24. It's literally like it, the way. I, and again, it's almost like the uh, Ghostbusters thing we talked about last time. I almost I'm, I'm having a more enjoyable time thinking about designated survivor as if it's an alternate reality to 24 where Kiefer Sutherland is a different um, it's it's Jack Bauer, but with a different name. And instead of going to uh, uh, fight crime and terrorism, <laughs> he becomes first the president. He, he became the president. <laughs> I don't know how many times he has sat there. Um, I don't know how many times he has sat there and and like all of a sudden goes, son of a bitch. Like, I mean, it's <laughs> all I need him to do at some point in time is yell Chloe, like Chloe. Like, <laughs> and not only that, they got Kim Raver to come back, who was like his main love interest throughout the entire almost the entire run of 24 uh, to come back. She played uh, Audrey in 24. And all of a sudden she shows up and is like his new love interest in the, and I'm like, Oh, come on. <laughs> Could you be more derivative? Could you, exactly. <laughs> like, what the hell are you doing, man? That's like, awesome. and I, like, I know she's going to be like, she's going to end up being a bad guy at some point, just because like, that's what ends up happening in 24. Even though she wasn't really a bad guy, they, they, sh- they made you think she was a bad guy, like a Russian spy or something. So then Jack Bauer like tortures her and all this. So I'm just like waiting for the president to literally lock her in a room and torture her because that's what is bound to happen at some. But sure. literally, like they have, they have like this FBI agent, like these two FBI agents working. Like they've got like got the field agent and then they've got the brain guy behind the computer, right? Yeah, working out of the White House, like in some secret room. <laughs> Come on. Nice. Like, it's just, it's gotten silly at this point. And, and, it, and honestly, I'm just so invested in it. I don't want to stop. Like, I, I can't, I always have a hard time just leaving a series. Like, I will give a series everything. I, I have no problem walking I know away. you don't. And I, and um, I, I wish I was you. Yeah. I have no problem. I wish I was you. F- first episode doesn't grab me. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. I pass. I've tried. I mean, there's been time. I've just, I've given it. Um, what was the one that we, we did walk away from finally the leftovers, neither the wife or I could get into the leftovers. Okay. And I, that's a critically acclaimed show. I just couldn't get into it and neither could she. And so after we finally were just like, I'm just not tuning in anymore. Nice. So we did that. Um, 
You didn't watch. You didn't watch House of Cards because of the dog, right? Yeah, the first episode he killed a dog. I was done with you that. You're done with the dog, which yep. I love. House of Cards. I, I still, even the last season. I think you know, considering what they had to go through to create that last season. Literally, I think they shot, reshot the entire last season. Hmm. Um, after after the Spacey incident, and so um, it was interesting to see where that went. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, every time I think about him, I, I think of Baby Driver. <laughs> <laughs> After the fact of all the stuff that you find out about him, he has some hilarious lines in Baby Driver. Right. He's he's talking about, he's like, I couldn't believe the balls on that kid. <laughs> but he's talking about the, the, the Baby Driver. A lot of his movies are like that. Like, honestly, like, that's the thing. You go back, like, oh it's... Oh, my God. So, it's, some of the lines in his movies are just so wrong. Now, now. that you know. <laughs> yeah, now that you know, they're yeah, so, it's a, so it's a wrong. problem. It's a problem. I guess. Especially there's multiple lines in Baby Driver that are so it's so wrong. Exactly. <laughs> I I yeah, I loved Baby but Driver. I, I, I love Baby Driver Baby too. Driver's great. He's and he plays a jerk in that movie and he gets what's coming to him in the end. Absolutely. So it's um, it's worth watching. The even, opening even if you hate Kevin, ex- Kevin Spacey. Exactly. The opening scene in that movie is phenomenal. It really is. I and that's I, I bought a Subaru because of that movie. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, not not the opening scene. I mean I love the chase scene to open that movie. Yeah, but that the, Subaru um, he's driving at the beginning, that was yeah. awesome. Um the um I'm talking about the one shot that they did where he leaves to go get coffee, gets the coffee and goes all the way back. That was a cool shot. That's a great shot. I mean, we were talking about one shots a few episodes ago. Yeah. That's one of the, uh, that one well, was epic. In my opinion, Edgar Wright is a master at transitions. Right, the way he's able to transition and and blend scenes together mm-hmm. um, in his films is just amazing, in my opinion. Well, we were just talking about before we went live about uh, 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 Scott Pilgrim being ten years old today. Ten years old today, yeah, that's so cool. It, I it love cool. Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, and it's a video game movie. Oh my god! Um, you know the the, op- the movie opens with like the theme song from the uh, A Link to the Past, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the yeah. Past. Um, the theme song to that it opens the film. I mean, it's it's, it's amazing. If you don't follow um, Edgar Wright on uh, on Twitter, you need to. Uh, he he's been posting stuff all week this week with like behind the scenes things that he shot hmm. uh, when they were doing like uh, screen tests and um, and shot tests and everything. And one of my favorite parts of that movie was when um, is it? F- I don't think it's Flowers that shows up at his door. It's another one of the girls that show up at his door and um, knives. Knives, knives shows chow. up. Knife, yeah, knives chow shows up, and <laughs> and what's his name? Like starts to like close the door. Like she, he opens it completely, and then you see Scott like in the background, and he like closes it and he jumps out. The and window. then he jumps out the window. And, like yep. they show, like he shows like a behind the scenes testing where they just set up cardboard boxes to like build this little apartment so they could do it, <laughs> and like how they would shoot it and everything. It's adorable. That's like funny. it's really, it's really, really funny. Anyway, I love Scott Pilgrim. That's <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a Edgar Wright fan. Oh yeah, huge. Scott Pilgrim fan. I, I think it was one of the best movies of 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, thought, thought so back then, and I, I I've probably seen it a dozen times since then. Yeah, and I enjoy it every time. Yeah, um, and and what amazes me is how many of those actors have just blown up since then in the past 10 years. Sure, there's so many name actors that people didn't know about back then. Right, like Chris Evans has a small part. Brandon. Brandon Routh has a small part. Allison Pill has a small part. Allison right. Brie has a small part. Um, I mean, think about it. you have Captain America and Captain Marvel in the same movie as bad guys. Anna Kendrick. That's um, crazy. Yeah, yeah, Anna, yeah. Captain America and Captain Marvel are both in the same movie. They just did. I don't know. Day. I don't know where they aired it. Uh, but again, to kind of celebrate this, they did a. I think it was last week. They did a live table read with all of the original actors again like like over yeah Zoom and I've, or I've read that that cast they still hang out every once in a while like you know once a year they'll all they'll still all get together sure and, you know and they still chat here and there and sure. you know that they're still pretty close right which is you know a neat story from in any movie it's interesting to think of like uh, uh, chris evans in this in this way but um but thinking back to that character that he was like in in that movie he's apparently like a wild man like he's not captain america you know what i mean like he's yeah. a pretty um again likable dude whatever like like he's a bro i guess is the best way i could put it right like he's a party animal and it's funny that you know disney and marvel kind of you know hung their hat on that on his head and said, you go be our Captain America for the next 13 years or right. whatever. Like, 
it's crazy interesting to think about like that kind of character again and he, and he started out doing comedies <laughs> right he's not exactly like like you know silly like stupid stuff yeah but it's interesting Spo- spoof spoof stuff yeah, yeah. um but, but not, not another teen movie right um just well, the banana was first wasn't it? the banana in the ass <laughs> Yeah, because like, he walks away. <laughs> yeah, like the opposite of Varsity Blues. Instead of the girl coming out with right. whipped cream, the guy comes out. Yeah, yep. yeah, that was him. Spo- yep. spoofing. That was him. Varsity Blues. That was him. Um, anyway, uh, for oh it, but yeah, Umbrella Academy. Just to bring it back around, I am very excited for the third season. How they kind of they're going to bring back Reginald and they're going to bring back Ben for the third season. So do you I, think I'm very excited for that? So do you think Sparrow Academy ends up being the big bad? Do you think they team up? Do you think Sparrow Academy is made up of the original actors? Or do you, so my interpretation is that none of the Sparrow Academy, other than Ben, are the original Umbrella Academy. Yeah, like he adopted seven different kids. That's a, because they made it a point to remind you in this second season that there were 43 children born on that day. Yeah. And they want to, and they, one of them was the director's daughter, right? Li- um, Lila, Lila, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so there's basically they've got so there's eight. So basically, eight of them are, um, and they all consider themselves brothers and sisters, right? So there's so there's at least there's at least six other kids out of that forty two uh, number up there. And then did you see the little floating box? The yeah. hell is that? Yeah, that was the little boy from 1963, Har- Harlan. You think? No. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. It's Harlan. Why would you think that? I think she messed him up psychologically by you know transferring her powers to him and taking him back, and I think he still has some powers. Um, and so what, they just transferred his consciousness into a box? I don't know. I mean, obviously he's an know. alien, or Reginald's an alien, so he can do weird, you know, whatever stuff, but... Um, so that was I wanted that that's what I wanted to ask you about. Um, that's why I needed you to finish it because because this is this these are my questions or this was my question was the way it was presented throughout the entire season. Reginald was in on the assassination and knew of assassination of JFK, mm-hmm. but by the end of it, when it happens, he pretends like he did not go. He wasn't going along with it, right? But I'm confused because he was a part of the conversations. Yeah. So where, and, and the other guys did it. Right. So where and did he, that? And he told them he didn't want to be part of it if they were going to, going to go that route. Right. So when did that jump? You know what I mean? Like well, right. at what point in time? Because you would think like if he didn't want to go along with it or didn't. And, and he, he, and he knew had that about look, it. And he had that look like. St- yeah. Standing. I, I, none of it made sense. Yeah. At that. It, it, that was the point where I was like, what? Yeah. None of that made sense. Yeah. I he agree. used the decoy. Right. Yeah. And he knew that they were going to a set because the Umbrella Academy told him, showed him everything. Right. Right. He knew it. But still didn't do anything to stop it. Why? That's a good question. (laughs) And and maybe he still doesn't believe the Umbrella Academy story. Maybe he still doesn't believe, you know, that that they're his kids that he adopted and, you know, and were a disappointment because he can't have, you know, children that are disappointments or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. He can't have a big that just gor- really a gorilla like boy or <laughs> son. <laughs> That's just really and they haven't really explained what he's doing on the dark side of the moon. Even during the first season, they just he just threw just Luther there. up there. Yeah, he's just there. Like they never explained what Luther was doing up there. Right. So I guess that's what happens, and, and I think I've am I correct in saying that they are only doing three seasons? Like it's the next season is it? I I have no idea. Okay. I I don't know. I would be okay with that. You right. Know, if if they had a, a strong story arc and you know they were able to come to a good climax in that third season, mm-hmm. um, which you know if they're pitting two teams against one another, you know I, I you know I could see that happening. I'm anxious to see what like the Sparrow Academy's powers are. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like they gave Lila this this uh, power of mimic, you mm-hmm. know, mimicking everybody's. And and from what I could gather, she can mimic it, but it was never quite as powerful as what the person that fed her the power did, you know, was able to do, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, um, not Ellie. What the hell's, what the hell's her name? Um, Ellen Page's character. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, um, uh, it's, it's Russian. <laughs> oh, Vanya. Vanya. Thank you. Um, Vanya, you know, shoots everybody with her big power beam. Right. And it flat out kills them. Mm-hmm. Right. It killed all every single one of those dudes out there in that field. But then Lila does it back to them and it just knocks him back. 
that to me that was what signified she can she can mimic power but she can't bring the full scope of it just like when um um uh she was rumored and she flew you know flung it back at uh yeah she never died she didn't die she was able to snap herself out of it yeah like to me that that said that she you know couldn't um do it as as well. as well right doesn't have the full full scope of the power i i am super excited to see where they where they go with season three and i really do hope i honestly i kind of at this point i hope that they just end it with season three and say here you go like and i i, th- I th- there's not very many graphic novels for that i don't i think there's a finite number of those i think i think there's I think, only one or two i think you're right and i think i think what i read was the sparrow academy is mentioned but not fleshed out so i think that's even where people now are like i don't know where you're going with it so i don't know um i never read the graphic novels i didn't even know any existed until after i got done watching season two and then i was reading reviews on season two and then it popped up that there were graphic novels about that did you ever watch or did you ever read any of the graphic novels for walking dead no, no, and you don't watch the shows at all. I watched you? the first season. Well, after they fired Frank Darabont, I was not interested. In, okay, in the show whatsoever. Okay, yeah, I felt like AMC didn't know what they were doing at the time. Gotcha. That they were going to run the show into the ground, and and I, you know, I like Frank Darabont, but I didn't think he did a fantastic job at the first season. Like, you know, hopefully it could have gotten better if they had kept him on a showrunner. But I don't know. I, I I wasn't I wasn't a big fan of the studio at the time. Gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. I'm st- we're, we're just that's one of those ones we're invested in and so it's it's kind of gone like this with our internet like it's gone through highs and lows um i love the the character of negan jeffrey morgan mm-hmm. and and when they brought him in i was a big fan of it a lot of people think that's where the show kind of took a turn for the worse i don't agree with that but yeah, i mean he's directly from the graphic novel so right no i mean that's the thing and like then people hate that character from the novels right. as well they love him they they love to hate him and and uh, but anyway, I think I think it'd be interesting when they finish up the whole series, whenever that is. They really don't really have a lot of end in sight yet, hmm. which is crazy to think about because it's been on TV forever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm I'm be curious to watch that show from start to finish because now they're talking about. I mean, they already have a spinoff show in Fear of the Walking Dead, which I that's another one that the wife and I started to watch and then stopped. Right hated that series because we hated the characters in it we didn't like any of the characters and i think maybe that that was getting around or something like maybe that was the overall consensus for that show because halfway through the second season they started killing off all the main characters which was kind of on par for the walking dead but they still had like Mm -hmm. a core set of characters they kept on the walking dead but they like they like by the end of like the third or fourth season like they they killed off the main character and um, and they had like another somebody else kind of take over and and they started they, they almost kind of like rebooted themselves and um, like Jenna Elfman came in as like one of the main characters and a few other people right and I have I started liking it a lot more so I forced myself to go back my wife I still can't get the wife to do it but I've gone back and I have watched all of them up until this point. Um, but so they've got that spinoff series. They're doing a spinoff series of movies now where Andrew Lincoln's going to like he left the TV show as Rick Grimes. And now he's going to do it a movie series. And um, um, anyway, the, I'm, I'm curious to see where they finally like decide it's time to end the damn thing. Mm-hmm. But it's beyond the point that we've talked about before where I just feel like you're just padding it. Um you tell your story and move on, but they just still had a lot of graphic novel content to get through, mm-hmm. frankly. And yeah, there's a bunch of those books. Yeah, there's a bunch. I mean, they finally ended them. I think last year, at the end of last year, I think Kirkman mm-hmm. finally ended the novels, and he did come out and say that the the apocalypse was. And they don't get into it in the books, but the apocalypse was started because of spores that came down from space. And that's what and just infested us and we didn't know it hmm. kind of thing. They were just in the atmosphere. Anyway, interesting. It's a it's an interesting thing. Um so it'll be a good it'll be a good challenge to go through and like binge watch all of that series when it's when it's finally when it's finally all done. Um I if if you had to rank Umbrella Academy season two, let me start this. If you had to rank Umbrella Academy season one, uh out of ten um bungles what would you give it 
I, I guess I'd give it 10 brown eyes. 10 brown eyes? <laughs> Not bung holes, bungles. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Mr. Bungle. <laughs> Five Mr. Bungles. <laughs> Season uh, one. I, I, 10. 10 Mr. Bungles. 10 Mr. Bungles. Okay. <laughs> so you'd give it 10 Mr. Bungles. All right. Um, I would also I would also give it 10 Mr. Bungles. If you had to rank um season two where would you where would you rank it oh gosh i'd probably give it an eight 7.5 eight okay we're on the same page then we're absolutely 100 percent on the same page then with that with that show outside of the whole time travel incident we don't need to talk about that anymore <laughs> it's not possible it's not possible I, I, I could see like a spaceship that could go fast enough to go you know, through time in, a, in advance and something that, you know, and having a machine that could control the size of the universe and expand the universe, but contracting the universe and, and knowing where all those planets and, and suns were. Okay. Um, you would need to have, a you know, some kind of universal positioning system to know where those planets were in order for you to be back at the, on the same planet. Out of all the time travel movies that you have seen, which one do you think got it most right based off of science? Based off of science, mm-hmm. I mean, I, Back to the Future does a really good job of explaining the space time continuum and, you know, and, and all that stuff. And, and, you know, it, it does a really good job of like explaining paradoxes. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the par- the paradox um, illnesses in Umbrella Academy were pretty hilarious. That was pretty funny. <laughs> As opposed to Doc Brown's, um, you know, theories of, right. you know, <laughs> complete, you know, destruction of the space time continuum. Right. Shattering the universe. Um, yeah, I did like the, the flatulence and <laughs> homicidal rage. Homicidal rage. That was like, I think that was my favorite. Yeah, that was that was good. Uh, I would have to. I would have to go back to Event Horizon. To me, explained it how it's possible, right? Because basically, they're creating the ship is creating a black hole to travel through time, and to me, that goes through no pun intended your theory of of how time travel can't work well i I could see how you could have a wormhole that you know bends space and time you know Mm -hmm. and and you can travel through a wormhole like putting a pencil through a piece of paper right you know i i could see how that's possible but to be able to literally harness the power to shrink and expand the universe come on that's what a black hole is though I mean, a black hole? A black hole is a collapsed star. Right, but we don't, I mean... It, when, it, it's a massive amount of gravity that's collapsed in upon itself. Come on, didn't you see Inception? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Sh- show me how to harness the size of the universe. I can't... Show me how to expand and shrink the universe. I'm not... I, I, I don't do <laughs> science, man. I don't do science. Yeah. Show Jeez. me Show me how expanding the universe and, and contracting the universe is, you know, mathematically possible, and, and I'll... I'll consider, I, I'll consider hey, it. Hey, you know what? There are dudes out there that can. <laughs> it, it's a theory. Theoretically, time travel is possible. I could see time travel moving forward as possible. Hey. Time travel moving backward is not possible. You could not shrink the universe. For years, we knew the Earth was flat. Okay. So for us to sit there and say it's not possible, I mean, I'll never say anything's not possible. I mean, it was anything is possible if you put your mind to it. If you, there, there are places on <laughs> Earth where you can stand, where you can see the curvature of the Earth. You can stand at the top of a mountain that's tall enough and see the curvature of the Earth. Sure. I mean, right. But what I'm saying once, is, once you get to that point and you can see that curve, you you can continue that line. Right. And, but on a theory, it was proven that it was round. Just, I'm just saying, don't don't knock theories. You know what I mean? Like the theory could be, it's a theory. A theory is a jumping off point. If space and time are relative, as time is expanding, the universe is expanding. They're linked. Mm-hmm. Hey, all I'm saying is Superman went around the world backwards, <laughs> and it and it worked. That's that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's what happened. And, 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 and once way. once you harness the power to shrink. <laughs> And grow the universe. <laughs> then I want you to show me your universal positioning system that, that shows you where the Milky Way galaxy was 
you know, <laughs> because it's moving at 1.4 million miles per hour and figure out where that sucker was. I mean, relative, you know, in 1963. I mean, wasn't relativity uh, a theory when it was first developed? I mean, the theory of relativity is a theory still. It is still a theory. It I hasn't mean, been proven. Well, I mean, I mean, there's there's mathematical equations that, you know, that. That, I'm telling you, like man, e, I could e, look up some geek mathematical e equations MC right squared. now for... So E equals MC squared. That, that's energy equals mass times the speed of All light you squared. All is get some crystals <laughs> and put them in a machine and put a device between your crotch. And you're going to be able to throw a football over the mountains, baby. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, if I could go back to 89. If you could just go back to 89. Uh, speaking of going back... We, in, I, I, I'd take the Warriors to state. <laughs> Speaking of going back in time, um, uh, they announced Disney announced today that they are uh, producing a Lego Star Wars holiday, holiday special, special, baby. Yeah, I read that holiday special. Interesting. I love it. <laughs> I love it, and I think it's going to be all new, like the new characters. I don't think it's going to be like a Lego version of the holiday special. The infamous holiday special. I think it's like a new one, celebrating Life Day. Yeah, I mean, do, do you understand how vast the universe is? Oh my God, he's still on it. <laughs> he's still on it. What, pick, picture a grain of sand in, in your mind. One one single grain of sand. Now, now picture every single grain of sand on the planet. Okay. Okay. Every single beach on the planet oh, no, no, and every it. single grain of sand. I'm picturing For every single grain of sand on this planet, mm -hmm. it represents ten thousand suns in our universe. Okay. Every grain of sand equals 10,000 suns in our universe. Okay, I'm confused. What's going on? Every grain of sand... Okay, I got that. ...on our planet... Got that. ...represents 10,000 suns... Got that. ...in our universe. I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> like, what, are, but there, what does that have to do with time that, travel? I'm saying you need to literally harness the power to move that, that many suns. Oh, to go... Oh, to move through time. To move through time. You need to expand that many suns so you're telling me you can't just open a micro universe and get a gps <laughs> that's what i'm saying and fly your way through there that's what i'm saying you can't shrink down to the quantum verse oh whatever <laughs> and dive travel i don't believe you you just <laughs> hey, have you don't you don't have to you don't have it you just haven't what, figured hey, it out. What, what do i know what do you know you just haven't figured it out you just haven't figured it out <laughs> i have entire universes in my mind <laughs> But get ready, baby. And I haven't figured it out. Because you are going back in time in November to watch the Star Wars <laughs> Lego holiday special once again. Um, also, speaking of time, it is Alfred Hitchcock's birthday. I did not know if oh, you knew this. Nice. Uh, I, I saw yesterday was your the guy you grew up with, Steve Talley's birthday on IMDb. <laughs> is it really? Yesterday was. Oh. And I, I clicked on him. I, I, he's our age. Yeah. Um, Zach grew up with this guy who's in movies he has 54 credits on imdb yeah well um that's impressive in my book it's 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 it, it, it's it, it, most of them were like single episodes of television yeah he um it cracked me up he uh um which i don't think you watched but um the netflix series fuller house the when they kind of rebooted that i saw the episode he was on yeah like all of a sudden i didn't know he was on it, and all of a sudden like rachel and i were watching and i was like oh, i went to high school with that dude right um yeah, i was like hey i know that guy yeah he's, he's and that's and that's with my cousin that's a lot of what he's done is like that kind of stuff i think i think he started or tried to start his own little like production company yeah he does have production credits on yeah MDB. Um, i didn't i didn't look at them i don't know what they are like he i think i think he tried to produce a film with um eric roberts at hmm. one point in time or he did interesting and i think he was like even in it or something like that um so some of like those self-produced things uh he's done a lot of commercial spots it seemed like for a while it seemed like for a few years there like every single super bowl i was seeing him in a commercial hmm. of some kind interesting um he like I, I think the last one i saw him was it was a geico commercial the one with the space like he's in space and hmm. they're they're doing something in space anyway um yeah i mean he's i mean he's not like blowing up you know what i mean right. but he's obviously he's he's, he's doing he's enough. working he's working he's doing enough in you know he uh he moved um his family out to uh la years ago mm -hmm. um i don't know if him and his wife are still married out there i'm not sure um 
Uh, I, I read his bio. It said he it said he used to be married to somebody, but now he's married to somebody else in his is bio. That, is that what it is? Okay. That's what it says in his bio. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I I have absolutely no contact with him whatsoever. Right. So I don't I have the time. I don't I don't know what he's I don't know. He's, I think it's funny that it popped up on your IMDb. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I, I was scrolling way across. <laughs> like he was one of the, I mean, there were probably like thirty IMDb birthday. Hey, he was you know one what? Of the last ones, but he was on the IMDb home, for every page. Hey, for every Alfred Hitchcock birthday today, you have the Danny Bonaducci's. Yeah, yeah, his Danny, birthday's today Danny. also. Right? And I think John Slattery's birthday's today. Nice. And another Marvel connection would that be uh, um, Sebastian Stan? His okay. birthday today. Nice. Well. You know, I watched a movie with him recently. Um, I, I can't think of what it's called. It's him. He's the star of it. it has Samuel Jackson in it. That's funny. Um, and it's it's another um, you know uh, Vietnam movie. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's it's an interesting movie. Hmm. Um, I, I need to look up the name of it because one of my coworkers. It, it it's a true story about one of my coworkers' uncle. Okay. Um, so I, I, I need to remember the name of this, um, <laughs> because, um, her uncle was like the first airman from the air force to get like a medal of honor. Okay. Um, and it, it's the, it's the story. Sebastian Stan plays like, um, I, I can't remember what he is, but he's doing research to figure out why this guy who died in Vietnam deserves the medal of honor. Okay. Uh, so it's it's an interesting story, um, you know, just from that case, just seeing like the the politics and the background of you know what it's like to you know to to verify if somebody should receive the Medal of Honor or huh. not. Um, gosh, I need to look up this movie <laughs> uh, so I can give people the name of it while I'm sitting here well, talking it. about it. Do it. Um, you talk. I talk. My turn. Uh, I, yeah, actually, that was where I was going to end it because <laughs> I didn't have anything else to talk about. Uh, so. Um, the what's it called? The Boys comes out in a few weeks. You've still not watched that first season, right? I watched the first episode. I I'm not gonna. You're not gonna watch it? No. Oh, that's a shame. Such a good show. No thanks. <laughs> I would give that first episode a strong four or five. Really, uh, Mr. Bungles. Mr. Bungles. Okay. Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. It, to, to me, it's been done before, and it's been done better. Okay, fair enough. I mean, that's again. and and I don't want to pay for another subscription to Amazon when I already have Netflix and you don't, Apple. You and, don't. You don't already have an Amazon Prime. I don't know. I don't oh, have. Okay. I, I I'm not an Amazon Prime member. It's actually. I mean, you know, and honestly, it's just surprising that when people don't have Amazon Prime um, subscriptions. Really. Yeah, I have no desire. Um, yeah, it's called The Last Full Measure, um, it's a, and it's about Airman uh, William H. Pitsenberger, um, or Pitts was his nickname. Okay. And, uh, he, he saved countless lives. When did that come in out? In Vietnam. It uh, came out earlier this year. I want to say April, May, maybe. It was during quarantine. Oh. Um, is when it came out. Yeah, The Last Full Measure. Okay. Um, not as good as you know, Defy Bloods, um, but it's still it, it, an Crap, interesting, I still an interesting, that yet. interesting Vietnam movie. Okay, and it, it it does do some flashbacks to Vietnam, but mostly it's today. Same thing as Defy Bloods; it's most of it's today, but there are some flashbacks to Vietnam. It's on Netflix, or where, where do you get it? Um, I, well, I, I was aware of it because my coworker, it, that's one of my coworkers' um, uncle, is, is Pitts Pittsburgher was her uncle. Oh. Um, so I was aware of the story beforehand. So I, I was waiting for this, and I was looking for it, and I wanted to see it. So when it when it came out for rent on during quarantine, I I oh so just through like an iTunes or something is when yeah, you got it. Yeah, I just rented it through iTunes. And what's it called again? The Last Full Measure. Last Full Measure. Yeah. Okay. With Sebastian Stan and Sam Jackson. Okay. Fair enough. Well, then we'll check out the Last Full Measure. Um, you won't be checking out. Uh, um, you won't be checking out. Uh, uh, the boys no, season one no, or no, the you. new season two. So I won't have anybody to talk to the damn boys about, which yeah. sucks. Um, yeah, I, it's been done before. Been done better. Powers. <laughs> go see, pa go watch, watch powers. Powers. Yeah. So much better. Charles Copley is in it. Eddie Izzard's in it. I don't know that one. Yeah, it, it's on PlayStation. It's a, uh, it comes with your PlayStation plus oh. membership. Okay. <laughs> it was, I, I think that, 
I think Sony has now done away with that service, but they were trying to launch like a Netflix. Oh, uh, I can't remember what it's called. View, Sony PlayStation View, or well, something PlayStation like that. View is their TV. Channels. I think, and I think they discontinued it. They did discontinue PlayStation View, but that but, was like live that TV. Was, but that was their series was Powers, oh. and it was awesome. Eddie Izzard gotcha. was like the big bad. Charlotte Copley was the lead. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So check great, out. Yeah, great superhero. Check stuff. out Powers. Like and Brian Michael Bendis was the writer. He's great comic book writer. Okay. And speaking of PlayStation Plus, make sure you play uh, Fall Guys. It's, it's dangerously addictive. Fall Guys? Yeah. Are you you're a PlayStation Plus member? Uh, not currently, I don't think. Oh, okay. Right. Um, well, then but yeah, but I, I do. I do. <laughs> um, every once in a while, I'll, I'll do a plus membership okay. if, I, if I need it to play an online game or something. Well, then or, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the game then, because you have to. If you're not a PlayStation Plus member, you have to buy it. and It's like twenty bucks, and I don't yeah. think that game's worth twenty dollars. But if you already have the the plush subscription, then it's free. The Fall Guys. Fall Guys. It's it's. it's um, Is it a side scrolling? No, it's like think of it like Mario Party. Mar- oh, okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Think. Think of it like Mario Party. I think I'm thinking of Fury Unleashed is the one I'm thinking of. I don't know that one either. But it, it's it right. Cur- currently, it's available on PlayStation and PC. I don't know if it's available on Xbox or not. But they're not cross platforming it yet. They they're planning on it. But as of <laughs> right now, it's you can't play together on all that <laughs> stuff. So anyway, it's not cross platform. Not cross platform like Fortnite is. No. Correct. Correct. Okay. Let's get the hell out of here. Okay. Um, where can the kids find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter um, at the Rut Legend on Twitter. You are on Twitter. You're not using Twitter. I never see you tweet. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I I get on there and I look around and I like stuff and <laughs> retweet stuff. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, I, I don't really post. <laughs> I, I could start. All right, on Twitter at the Rut Legend, and I am on Twitter and Twitch at Zach M Rutledge, and we will catch you, you, and you, and you, and you next time. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs>